Um, so yeah, so, so that, that talk is about uh, notebooks in Scala and more in particularly about uh, Jupyter Scala, which is a, a Scala kernel for Jupyter that, uh, that I wrote. Um, so uh, in that talk, I'd like to uh, first uh, quickly discuss what were the, the, motivation, the motivations for writing it. Uh, then uh, just give you a quick overview of its architecture. And uh, lastly, um, I'll do a demo of uh, what it can do in particular, uh, how to do calculations uh, with Spark with it. Uh, I show you a proof of, co proof of concept of, a flink, of using Flink from it. And uh, I'll show you how, uh, how to use the plotting libraries uh, for, from it. Uh, so about me, um, so I contributed a bit to Shapeless uh, and authored a few few projects uh, around it. Uh, so I'm the author of Coursier, which is a library to manage dependencies that I talked about uh, here uh, yesterday. And, uh, and so I'm also the author of Jupyter Scala. And uh, I'm working for a company called Tids.tv, which does uh, native video advertising. Um, so the, the, the motivations for writing uh, Jupyter Scala um, um, Jupyter Scala ends at being uh, a, a simple bridge between two, two projects. That is the first, uh, on the one hand, uh, Jupyter. Uh, so you know the, the, the notebook uh, server from uh, the, the Python community. Uh, Jupyter, which, which has a nice uh, ecosystem like uh, Hydrogen to, to, use, uh, to use the Jupyter kernels from Atom, uh, Interact, which is, uh, which is a, 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 new, uh, a new UI for Jupyter. Uh, Estera. And so uh, Jupyter Scala aims at being a, being a bridge between Jupyter and Ammonite on the other end, which is, uh, uh, I don't know if, uh, I guess you, you must know it, it's a, it's a, rep it's a new repel for, for Scala, written by uh, Li Hao Yi, uh, who must have talked about it uh, this morning. Um, and so it has a, a whole bunch of, of nice features. Uh, and so uh, Jupyter Scala ends at uh, bringing them uh, into, uh, into Jupyter. Um, so, um, for now, uh, Ammonite doesn't support uh, Spark or this kind of things uh, out of the box. So, Jupyter Scala uh, uses a, a fork of it uh, that I'm going to demo right after. Uh, but hopefully, at some point, uh, it m um, I mean, currently, the, the, the differences between the fork of Jupyter Scala and Ammonite uh, aren't that big. I mean, the, the, the gap is narrowing. So, at some point, uh, uh, hopefully, it will be able to rely on the, 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 the original Ammonite. Uh, and, so, and one also of the motivation of Jupyter Scala is being able to add support for big data frameworks, this Spark, Flink, etc., uh, on the fly. That is, uh, Jupyter Scala is uh, really a Scala kernel, but we can add support for uh, other things uh, uh, on demand. Uh, so, a uh, quick overview of its architecture. So, uh, yeah, so, it's a bridge between Jupyter and Ammonite. Um, okay, yeah, so this is basically what I told you. Uh, um, I, I'll demo this just after, so we can add, uh, we see that we can add support for Spark, and even uh, I'll show you sort of a proof of concept for Flink uh, right after. Um, so, and just a warning before that, uh, it's quite in development, that is, uh, it, uh, it under, under, underwent two, two rewrites uh, the last year. Uh, sadly, it, has, it lacks a bit uh, documentation. Um, and uh, to my knowledge, it has just one big user, which is uh, the company where I work, uh, where uh, about 10, 20 people uh, use it, uh, 20 people across several teams, uh, mostly to do Spark calculations on uh, YARN, and also to, to, to do plotting, to do analysis on our logs, etc. And the, the, what I'm going to demo is not uh, pushed yet, so I hope it will be in a few days. I, I hope I'll be able to push it in a few days, because uh, the, the code is a bit rough for now. Um, okay, so for the demo, um, so I'll start with uh, Spark calculations. Okay, so we, we have this uh, small Ian cluster, um, and um, so uh, so basically I, j I, I installed uh, Jupyter and then the, the Jupyter Scala um, on the same machine. And um, so this is a notebook. Uh, I, uh, it is not uh, run yet. Um, so basically, uh, so I think Jupyter Scala is, uh, at its core, it's a Scala kernel. And we can add uh, support for Spark, etc. on the fly. So uh, the, the first cell here uh, adds support for, for Spark. Uh, 
so that we can use uh, the, the, the yarn cluster that I showed you just before. So here, basically, what we do, um, the, the first line just uh, silences logs. Uh, so you know we load uh, SLF4J. Uh, the second one loads the version of Spark that we want. So it loads the Spark uh, 202. Uh, and the last one loads a, a, a small library, which is the bridge from Jupyter Scar that, uh, that allows to use Spark from, uh, from the kernel. Uh, so this is the development version. Um, and right after that, we have a few, a few imports. So uh, imports for the, the, from the, the lib just, just above. Uh, we, we have a few imports for Spark itself. Uh, the, the import above here um, made, uh, made uh, put at our disposal the SQL context we see ju just before. And then we call a few methods first to set up uh, yarn. So um, we call this method by supplying it um, the path to our cluster configuration, which is uh, this directory and uh, this machine. Uh, then there's a small method, uh, a small thing for specific to EMR, uh, because there are a few, a few things that don't work out of the box for it. Uh, so here, uh, the, the version is the Hadoop version. Um, and right after that, we initialize the Spark configuration so we set the app name, uh, we ask for these machines, and SC is the Spark context we're used to. Um, so I'm going to run that. Um, okay. the, the, it was that in, in the red state. Uh, okay, sorry. Um, okay. So uh, I silence the log here. Um, so when it starts, uh, we can uh, we can follow what happens in the uh, cluster UI to wait for our application to, to pop up. So, and just to be sure that everything goes well, I just check the output. Okay. Okay, what is it doing? Okay, I guess this is the demo effect. Uh, I'm going to restart it. Uh, I'm going to try the same with uh, the command line, which I wanted to show after, but uh, I'll do that right now.
Okay, so actually, yeah. Um, don't know what happened here. Uh, uh, okay, so th this one started. So here we have the output of, uh, of the cell. Uh, it, it's a development version, so, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah. Um, and here, yeah, okay, here we have the, the application corresponding to, uh, to what we have in, in the notebook. Um, and uh, to show you how it, that it works, I'm going to, uh, to do some dummy calculations uh, with it. So, okay. Uh, so here we have the distributed thing, and uh, we summed it. And, uh, basically, the map, you know, should say that is uh, the, closure, <coughs> the closure here. Uh, and we can check in the UI that uh, something went on. Okay, so this is the, the calculation we, we just ran. Um, so uh, yeah, we can also load things from uh, data frames. So I don't have uh, some packet logs uh, at disposal here, but uh, we can nevertheless uh, do some basic equations. Okay. Which we can find uh, here. Um, so that was for uh, Spark. Um, then um, I also uh, spawned, uh, so, so this is not what I'm going to show is really just a proof of, con of concept. Um, so I spawned a small uh, Flink, uh, a local Flink cluster on the machine where Jupyter is running. Um, so I don't know uh, much about Flink uh, yet. So, um, uh, but, um, also, uh, I, I was able to, to write a small bridge between uh, Flink and uh, Jupyter Scala that, uh, that basically does what the Flink uh, repel does. And um, so, okay. Mm. Okay, it was in a still state. Uh, okay, so this one a bit quicker. So here I just load a bridge between Jupyter Scala and Flink, uh, which itself depends on Flink, uh, um, because that's uh, uh, unlike the Spark bridge uh, just before. Uh, and then we import a few things from the bridge and we initialize Flink uh, by giving it the address and the port of the Flink cluster, uh, which we can find the UI here. Um, and then env is the Flink environment that we can use to make equations. So we can, uh, for example, uh, so here I'm just loading a local file. Uh, I'm running a few things. And Flink is made such that um, even so if this is a local cluster, uh, it still sells these things from the, the notebook. I mean, uh, it's uh, the, the we, we still have to pass the class pass of what is in the notebook in a, in a specific way to, to Flink. Um, so okay, so we got the result uh, here. Uh, then we can also plot um, uh, from the kernel. Uh, so there's this library uh, that I didn't write, uh, which is called Vegas, which is uh, which allows to use uh, the Vigalite library from Scala, uh, and it can be used from the kernel here. So on the first line here, I load the, the library. Uh, then there are a few imports for uh, Vegas, so the, the plotting library. Uh, this is just some boilerplate, um, ju just before, uh, just after. Um, OK, so it was also in the state state, sorry. OK, so uh, and we get a plot from uh, Vega here. Um, now the, the Viga plots are a bit static, so uh, I, I wrote um, a small library to, to be able to do pl plots with the plotty library from the notebook. So I'm going to quickly show it. Um, state state two. So first I'm loading the library, I'm adding a few imports. Uh, this is just some bar plate. Um, and then we can uh, plot things with Plotly. Uh, so this is just a scatter plot, but we can also do bar charts, uh, etc. Um, um, the, the library address is this one. Um, uh, so that was from the notebooks. And uh, one nice thing with the architecture of Jupyter Scala is we can do almost the same from the CLI. Um, that is, um, for example, I can copy paste the code here. So I'm going to restart that. I'm going to copy paste the, the notebook code in uh, an ammonite session. I mean, this is the, a modified ammonite so that it can run a Spark. And, uh, and we should get the same result that we have in the, in the notebook. Um,
because uh, here the, the Spark application initializes uh, through the, the cluster. I guess while the, the, the while Spark is launching on the cluster, uh, we can, uh, I mean, I can answer questions. Um, um, just to, to resume, uh, basically, so the Jupyter Scala can be used through two UIs, so through Jupyter and through the CLI. Uh, and support for these frameworks can be added on the fly, and I guess uh, also support for other frameworks could be added like uh, Google Cloud Platform, uh, Scalding, uh, I haven't tried, but uh, I guess it could be done. And uh, beware, it's a bit in development. Um, but uh, I mean, uh, it's already uh, seriously used at my company, and uh, it's, it's open to contributions. So that's it, I if you have questions, Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, the question was, uh, what kind of modifications uh, 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 had to be done to Ammonite for for it to run Spark? Um, one of them, the, the biggest, is to uh, you know Ammonite when it passes, it puts your code in uh, singletons. You know when you type var n equal to equals two, it puts that in the singletons and compile that. Uh, and the problem with singletons is that they are not um, serialization friendly. You know, you, if you serialize a singleton, you actually don't serialize the, uh, the content of its fields. Uh, you serialize just a reference to its type, and it gets recreated. But when you deserialize it on another machine, it gets recreated. And, um, and so the, the code that, I mean, you don't reserialize it. And so you have to wrap things in classes rather than singletons. And this brings a whole bunch of new problems to manage imports and this kind of stuff. But uh, this can be done. And, uh, I think this is the, the biggest change that I had to, to make. Plus a few others to be able to use it from Jupyter. Uh, so that uh, the terminal, etc. Don't go, don't go in the way. Thank you. Uh, OK, so, uh, thanks. Yeah, so yeah. Time is up, but we, we can. Uh, yeah. um, okay. How many implementations of Scala running in Jupyter you know, are really, one really can work with? Like, uh, there, there are several implementations, like five. Yeah, notebooks, you mean? Uh, yeah. uh, uh, so, which ones do you, are you aware of, um, are working? Like, uh, are um, from Jupyter, uh, uh, you should ask to other users, I, I guess, but uh, um, historically there was iScala, which I think was the first Scala kernel for Jupyter, mm -hmm. uh, whose development was a bit stalled, uh, which is one of the reasons I started Jupyter Scala. Uh, the story, which is specific to Spark, uh, which I think should work, but it's it's more f it's only for Spark, so we can't add uh, the framework to it. Um, uh, and I guess for Jupyter, that's it. Uh, then there are other notebooks. So you have Spark notebook, which uh, took the UI from Jupyter and uh, just copy pasted it. Uh, you have uh, Zeppelin, which is uh, quite known. Ze Zeppelin, I think, uh, is a reference now. But it's not Jupyter. It's less developer friendly. Uh, it's more for end users, I guess. Yeah, okay, so th thanks for your attention. <laughs>